So uh, yes, we're here to share, share our some uh, exploration about this. So our topic today is uh, booting DVDK application quickly by device composition. So this is Yahweh and also Jin is still in the, in the channel. So uh, let's take a look at uh, our agenda first. So firstly, we will uh, introduce uh, the background about so why startup time matters. So especially in the cloud native ages. So, and then I uh, will give some analysis about uh, how the DBDK startup time is consisting of and what is uh, our benchmark results for this and uh, what is its problem. So, and then uh, uh, due to the problem, we find that we've proposed our proposal, which is uh, the virtual device composition to solve this problem. So we'll give her an overall idea and some detailed design about uh, our proposal. And then uh, we were given uh, one of the methods to implement this virtual device conversation, uh, which we call platform assisted uh, BDC. And also you may all you may also hear another name is uh, our Intel scale scale LB. So and then uh, we will give some uh, takeaway and conclusion. So uh, let's go to our first topic. First, first page. So, uh, so in the current world, so the whole industry is evolving from the monolithic application to loose coupled module. So normally, uh, this uh, service will be deployed as a microservice uh, in the container runtime interface. So, due to this architecture, so it has uh, very strong requirements for the uh, service elastic deployment and first service online. So, and this, uh, this is needed for application to boot quickly. So this is why uh, startup time is matters here. And also let's take a look at, take a look at uh, the trend happening in the AFE industry. So uh, in the very early stage, all the network function is deployed uh, as a monolithic application directly on the host machine. And things, uh, it depends on so much uh, components such as host OS and other things, hardware. So, and it will not be so flexible. And then later we put all this uh, network function inside the virtual machine, and then which we call this uh, virtual network function or VNF. So because this uh, application is packaged as uh, the format of much machine, so it will be uh, more flexible for it to be migrated to the other place and also uh, good to be maintained. And then later, uh, so the cloud native network function is introduced, uh, which means we put all the service uh, inside the cloud native environment, uh, typically is a container runtime environment. So that the uh, container has more lots of advantages, as you know, like uh, finer grained sharing resource, uh, lightweight, flexible, and kind of this. So uh, if the data plan uh, net container network function choose the DBDK as the underlying infrastructure, then uh, the DBDK based microservice start time matters a lot. So this is our uh, background. So uh, next, I uh, will give an analysis about the DBDK startup, startup time. So firstly, uh, we choose uh, TestPMD as an example to do the analysis. So normally we uh, list uh, we list the components here to consist of our uh, startup, startup time. So first is the EAL initialization, which is the runtime in it. In it. And then after the runtime, so normally we will go to some memory allocation uh, like mBuffer, which is typically used for uh, TXIXQ. So after the runtime environment and the memory has been uh, set up correctly, so we will uh, start the configure device and then the rest of part, we, should, uh, we list them at other. 
So uh, let's take a look at more detailed uh, this startup sequence diagram. So whenever we start the main function, we are calling this RTE or init. And then we're going to this uh, bus prop stage. So you can see here, we are uh, specific, we intentionally list this prop, bus prop uh, because later you, can, you will find that bus prop uh, performs uh, a lot lots of difference under different use cases. So uh, in the bus prop state, so we will, we will scan all the device under this bus and then prop the device driver here. So, and then next uh, in their application, so whenever we create our M buffer pool, we call this uh, packet and buffer pro create to uh, build our memory pool storing the M buffer. So, and after that, we just uh, start the port, which means uh, we are calling this uh, RT either dev API to for the device configure and device start all these things. So uh, next we will give our uh, benchmark results. So uh, firstly, we take some, uh, take the AFXDP as the comparison versus the single dial V. So uh, AFXDP, as you know, is kind of, uh, kind of a bypassing mechanism, which is uh, quite popular in the cloud native ages. So we take this uh, as comparison. So uh, let's take this picture. As you can see, uh, there are several parts here. So uh, this orange part is uh, bus prop time consumed, and the green part is memory allocation consumed, and device configures red part, and the rest of the part is the gray color. And as you can see that, so no matter for the AFXDP or the single ILV, so they almost consume similar time for the memory allocation, device configure, and other part. But uh, for the single ILV, you can see uh, it takes lots of time in the bus prop stage. So this is our start startup time killer. And as you can see that, so uh, the bus prop stage time it takes, um, it, is, is, it is larger than the overall time FXDP booting takes. So as you can see, this is the problem uh, on the single LV. And then we will give our proposal here. So this is, uh, we call it virtual device composition here. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at the, uh, some uh, ideas. You can see uh, FXDP hand boot very fast, uh, but it has not so much high performance IO. And uh, for the single LV, actually, as the data show in the last slide, you can see this, it takes too much time on the booting stage, but as you, we all know, it is high performance. So uh, can we find a way to combine these two things and take both of these things advantage and put them together? So uh, this is how right here. Uh, just we uh, taking data pass, pass through, and also the control pass emulation. So which means we can achieve both fast boot and also performance IO. So as you can see uh, in this picture, uh, this dash line means control pass. So whenever our uh, device uh, PMD wants to access the device resource, it will always go into the virtual device composition module and then going to our uh, hardware resource. Uh, and for the data pass, it just bypass the host OS and directly go into the underlying hardware. So next we will give some uh, more detailed design. So for the virtual device composition, actually we are, uh, as you know, this is a virtual device. So we are composing a device from uh, our collection of hardware source like uh, Q, TXRS Q, interrupt and kind of this. So this is the overall idea. So uh, whenever we say we're uh, composing device from the queue and the interrupt level, this means uh, we, in the data pass, we need to support the final grain sharing at the queue level, not, that, not at the device level. So this is the final grain sharing requirement. And also since we, uh, we the data, data 
data pass performance IO is mandatory. So we still need a direct DMA read write from device and going directly into the uh, user space. So DMA read write is also mandatory. And once we we use the DMA read write, we need to make sure it does not attack the other user space domain or memory. This means uh, we need to do the IO address space isolation. So this is for the data pass prerequisites. And for the control pass, uh, as you know, we're composing the device, so which means this device, we need to intercept every access to the device resource so that we can let this, uh, we, so that this module can behave like whatever it wants because we intercept every access. And then let's, next we'll give some uh, architecture diagram. So this is uh, overall, uh, there are two ways to, uh, for the virtual device composition. There are two solutions. So uh, as you can see, one is device specific, another is platform assisted. So uh, no matter for which, uh, each uh, solution we, we choose. Actually, you can see the green part here, they're all the same. So, which means, as you can see, uh, let's firstly see the control path. So whenever user space process or user space driver, I want to access or device resource, you will always falling into the virtual device composition module. And then in this module, uh, you will do some configure and finally, uh, grant you some uh, resource it wants or not. So this is for the control pass. As you can see, the control pass is always being intercepted. And for the data pass, as you can see, it always bypassing the host OS, VMM, and directly going to the underlying hardware. So, and when, when, when we go into the hardware, you, can, you will find that. So, uh, we since this is the DMA read write, so we need to do the IO address space isolation. So, and as you can see, the difference here is that the isolation method is different. So, for the device specific part, it, which means so if your device sup, uh, support uh, device specific uh, fabric uh, has this ability to do the IO address domain to do uh, translation and isolation, which means you can, your device can translate all these things by yourself. And then uh, whenever uh, Q is issuing your DMA request, it will go first, like going to the uh, device fabric internally and then go into your space. So you can implement your own uh, specific method. So this is one solution. And another solution is that, so uh, if your device does not support this, then and you can uh, leverage the platform's capability. So uh, you can see uh, the platform has provided a uh, DMA mapping functionality, which means can help the device to do the uh, DMA domain translation and isolation. Uh, but there are some uh, prerequisites for the device yeah, because uh, the, the requirement is that the physical device needs to support this past the capability. So the past the capability is a PCIe specification defined capability, uh, which means whenever your device uh, wants to send a DMA request, which is, a, uh, which is, is packaged as a PCIe TLP, so your device uh, can add a passive prefix at the start of the PCIe TLP. And then when this PCIe transaction is going from the device into the root complex, uh, the platform IOMMU can capture this passive prefix so that uh, the platform node uh, can, by combining the passive and the bus device function uh, from the PCIe transaction, it can uniquely mark her device by this PDF plus pass it so that by this unique, unique ID, the platform can identify the correctly correct domain, which is cross corresponding for this device. 
so that the platform can help you to do the uh, DMA translation and isolation. So that is the whole idea. So let's take a uh, simple look back. So if your device supports or uh, supports the IO address space translation, so your device can implement implement device specific way. And if your device does not support, has not this capability, you can leverage the platform's capability. And the only requirements is that you need to add this passive capability support. So, and this is our uh, solution. And then we were, uh, we were take an example as one method for the, this virtual device conversation, which we call platform assisted virtual device conversation. And also this is uh, actually it's the Intel Scalable V. So uh, Intel Scalable V is a newly developed Intel virtualization solution targeted for the next generation CPU server platforms uh, like Cephal Rapids. So as you can see, uh, I list two paths here to help you understand. So for the data path, it still has the pass through, which means all the data path is bypassing the host OS directly going to the US space. But at this time with the past isolation, which is uh, look quite similar as the last page, last slide shows. So this means also you need to support final grain sharing. And in this, we just uh, put or the queue interrupt as a resource set, which is calling assignable device interface, ADI here. So, and also in, since we are uh, directly issuing DMA with write, so we had our native performance. And also we had our uh, hardware enforced isolation, which is also sh is sh already shown at the last slide. So, and for the control pass, as you can see, uh, whenever a PMD you're trying to access a device resource, so all the access is intercepted by the virtual device conversation module here, so that uh, it is very flexible for the virtual device conversation module to manage the device life cycle. So, and also since the, the interception is, uh, we have intercepted all the access to device resource. So it is also friendly to do the device snapshot uh, and also like for the land migration case. So next, let's see how our implemented way to improve this overall startup sequence. So let's firstly take a look at how the single level VVF uh, can consume so much time. So since uh, all the, since all the time is being consumed and is falling into the bus prop stage. So we have a more detailed analysis for the bus prop stage. So as you can see, uh, whenever we prob a, a bus and you can see we were doing some falling into some PCIe bus level and it reset so that, so whenever uh, from your space falling into the kernel space in this VFL module, then, uh, we need to perform the PCI function level reset because this is a real PCI device. So we need to follow this device cycle. So as you can see, uh, this device may, cons uh, this is consume lots of time here. And also when we doing the driver prop stage, as you can see, or when the driver wants to do some register or MMIO access here, so all the register access has been bypassed to hardware, which means we need to follow the hardware uh, designed life cycle or timing here. So, and then for this V case here, uh, as you can see, we also list the similar uh, sequence diagram. And the difference here is that, so whenever we're doing the bus level in to reset, um, and when we fall into the VFRO here, so it will issue the uh, device reset request to the driver or hardware. And then in this case, our virtual device conversation module will intercept this re reset, reset request. And then since this is a virtual device conversation by software, it means we 
Firstly, we no longer need to follow this PCI device timing here because we're not a real hardware device. And also, uh, though there's still some, also there's some hardware uh, uh, innate reset happening internally in the hardware, but soft, uh, we, this virtual device conversation allows software optimization so that we can uh, greatly improve, improve this time consumed. And also at the driver prop stage, so uh, as you can see, uh, whenever with the driver wants to do the device resource access here, so also we, our virtual device conversation module can intercept all these access uh, so as we can do the optimization as well. So, and uh, next uh, we will uh, list our benchmark results after uh, using this method. Uh, so before this, uh, we, we will list some dependency here yeah, because it's, it's a solution across the uh, quite some components here. So uh, for the DBDK part, we need some changes here. So firstly, we need to add a new NIC PMD driver here uh, so that we can prop this and initiate this device. It's actually it's a virtual device here. And also we need to introduce our new bus model which means we, uh, by this mass model, we know how to scan, discover this device, and do the uh, do some initialization if necessary. And for the host part, we need to add a virtual device conversation module so that we can intercept every access from the PMD to the underlying hardware. So that this this gives us so much uh, benefit we've listed before. So, and for the device part, as you can see, there are two solutions here. So if your device supports uh, IO address space, IO address space translation or isolation by yourself, yes, that is fine. And your device can do the DMA uh, translation by, your, by itself. And if your device does not support, uh, does not implement this logic, uh, so you can leverage our platform, which which is has the past a wheel IOMMU. So in this way, where your device needs to support PCIe passive capability. So whenever your device wants to issue or DMA request from some queue, so you can add a passive prefix uh, at the start of the TLP, and then when the PCIe TLP is going to the root complex at the platform. The LMMU can capture this passive, and by combining the passive with the bus device function, it can help you to do the domain translation and isolation. So that uh, can this can with these overall components, we can uh, implement the overall solution. So next is our uh, benchmark results. So uh, firstly, let's uh, look at this. Uh, Rest of the part. So as you can see, uh, we take uh, AFXDP, scale V, single V together for the comparison. And for the memory allocation, device configuration, and the other parts, uh, actually they consume almost the same time here. And for the single LV, as you can see, it consumes lots of time, but compared to the single rail V, scale V has decreased the startup time by lots of, and as you can, as you can see, it is a 4.6 times boost, which is a very promising improvement and boost. So, uh, but still, as you, as you can see, uh, comparing to uh, AFXDP, since it is a kind of software device, so it does not have, a it consumes almost zero time at the bus prop stage. So it's comparing to AFXDP, so the scale LV can, uh, will still consume a little bit more time than it. So overall, as you can see, uh, so with the application running on the scale LVs, so it actually boosts a little bit slower than the AFXDP, uh, but uh, it's, for the, the application running on the scale LV can boost one times faster than a single LVF 
future cities. So it's quite a promising improvement here. So uh, next is acknowledgement. So uh, yeah, sincerely thanks for the great help from Steve Lian for brainstorming the overall idea about this work and reviewing the slides. Yeah, we, we do have a question uh, here from um, okay. an attendee. What about using a Virtuo, Virtuo VDPA? Uh, so actually, uh, we do not uh, have some, uh, do not compare the VDPA here. So, so I think uh, maybe we can have some um, more data after we benchmark this. Yeah. Fair enough, thank you. Yeah. We have some questions here from in-person attendees. Okay, so I will uh, proceed. So uh, yeah, this is the last page. So there's some key takeaway. So uh, firstly, we introduce our uh, the background, the startup time matters, in the, especially in the cloud native ages. And also for the uh, device pass through, as you can see from our the data benchmark, uh, it has challenge, challenge on fast boot, but still it has a good performance. So and then we introduced, propose our uh, new design, which is called device conversation. So, and then uh, we uh, propose the overall design idea. And later we uh, show the, what, one of the virtual device conversation method, scale V, and show this uh, its performance and it can effectively boost startup time along with high performance as device pass through. So, uh, and we had a web, web paper link here in our website, uh, which is, has more detailed data and information here. So uh, if, you, uh, if you have any uh, interesting topic, uh, related topic to discussion, please contact me and Jeannie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we have a couple of quick questions and we're, in a little, we're getting close to the wire here, but uh, if you don't mind, we have a couple of quick questions from uh, attendees here in the audience. Can okay. I pass it off here? Thanks for the, the talk. Can you maybe give us an idea of, of how much time it is in in like seconds or milliseconds? Because you, you're only talking about like five times speed up and that it's very long, but how long is it in fact? Yeah, I think it's uh, milliseconds level actually. So we can, we can, uh, in, we can save uh, about, uh, about, uh, one one hundred milliseconds levels a time. Well, one other question: uh, Is this somehow related to mediated devices that came up a couple of years ago? I, I believe they also came up from Intel, right? Uh, so yeah, this is a good question. So uh, so the media device is actually is deprecated. So so we are not. Uh, we are following the community's latest progress, which, as you know, is IMMFD. So actually, we're we're uh, our total solution is based on the latest IMMFD solution to do here. Yeah, yeah we thank so you. This is not based on MDEV. Yeah. Thank you so much for the, the taking the time to contribute to user space and giving uh, your, your talk and answering questions. We really appreciate it and we enjoyed it. We have a round of applause, please. <laughs>